data has returned. Recruit a team of former teenagers for interviews. What time is it? I believe it's morphin' time. Oh, you know what? It's morphin' time. It's morphin' time. It's morphin' time. It's morphin' time. Steve, uh, we've known each other for a long time now. We got to, to meet during the first Power Morphicon way back uh, 2007. Uh, Man, of course, that was a long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. But uh, Power Rangers and Power Morphicon was one of the first assignments I had with Comics Online. So it's just perfect that we get to, to talk now about Power Rangers once and always. So congratulations on the new special. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate that. So excited. So spoiler warning, uh, we are going to talk about the episode. Uh, I have seen the press screener. Steve, of course, was in the episode, so he is aware of what happens. So this is your warning now that there will be discussion. Uh, we will also flash this on the, on the screen, so you have been warned. Uh, so Rita's back. We get a really amazing story. But most importantly, Rocky just seems to have fun throughout the entire thing. <laughs> he... He does seem like a, a little aloof about <laughs> about things, doesn't he? It, uh, can you talk about returning? Not only, of course, you, you came back for the 25th anniversary, but this is a little bit different when you're back with your, your fellow castmates from the Mighty Morphin era. Yeah, this was definitely different. You know, I mean, that the one that we did back in, in 2017, uh, it was great to come back and it was great to be back sort of on set, so to speak. Um, but this one is a lot different because this one is just... You know, most of the other reunion shows that are done are all done with, you know, teaming up with the current cast, so to speak, and sort of like helping them out, you know. Um, and so we've all just sort of had to take a background to the, you know, to the current cast, so to speak. And this one, of course, is just all about Mighty Morphin. So uh, it was definitely different. It was definitely unique. And, um, you know, getting to work with certain people that I've known for a long time, but have never been been able to be, be on camera with was also very cool. Do you ever think you're gonna be fighting putty patrollers again back in uh, the <laughs> red and white? I never would have dreamed that they would have brought the putties back. That's so cool. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I've spoken with Walter and Catherine at this point. Um, I'm interested to know, you know, what was the, the process and timeline like for you for getting involved with this project? Well, um, you know, I mean, um, you know, the casting director had reached out to me and asked, if, you know, you know, if I would have any interest um, in coming back. And, you know, like always, I always say yes, because, you know, um, the fans have been so supportive of us over the years. Like, um, I was surprised, you know, back when we, we first met each other in 2007, that we even still had a fan base and that they were as dedicated as they are. And then, you know, I was able not only to really see that unfold at that Power Morphicon, but I was able to see it unfold through the advent of all the social media that came out uh, all around that same time, you know, Facebook. And then of course, like all the other, you know, Twitter and Instagram, they all sort of came out around, around that same time. And right around that same time, Comic-Con started becoming part of you know, pop culture as, you know, part of a big part of America and or, or the world, really. And, you know, I just got all of a sudden all these opportunities to meet all these fans and see just how dedicated they are and how much they still love the show and how much it still means to them. And, you know, I just, um, you know, I, I found it amazing. So, um, you know, getting to experience that, um, you know, has been really cool. I wasn't reuniting with the Stone Canyon trio. <laughs> yeah that was a lot of fun um you know obviously you know working together with walter too for the first time on camera was also very cool but reuniting with with johnny and karen as well um knowing that we all got hired from the same city and we got hired on the same day and we all you know got thrust into the deep end of what we what is power rangers um you know it's it was you know it was kind of interesting to see it all come full circle you know from a production standpoint you've been involved with various iterations of this franchise between the original series, the movies, uh, of course, the reunions. How did this one compare and contrast from your past experiences? Well, this one to me was a bit more special than the others um, because I think it, you know, um, doing a tribute for, uh, for Tui Trong, which I feel, um, you know, was, was long overdue. 
um, you know, but obviously there was never really a reunion episode that was written the right way to touch on it, you know, so I, I'm glad that they created a, a, a show specifically to give her um, the credit um, and the, you know, the tribute that they needed to give her um, because of what she did for the franchise as well, you know? And Charlie stepping in to, to play her daughter, she was an absolute highlight of the entire episode. Oh, I know. And she's phenomenal. Like, she's such a sweet kid, you know? Um, I remember, you know, the first time that we handed her one of the morphers and then we, we actually showed her how to push the button on the side and it opened up and her eyes just lit up and she said, oh my God, this is real. <laughs> she was like, this is, this, this is happening right now, you know? Just to see her that excited reminded me like how excited I was when I first walked onto the set because I used to watch the show before, you know, and so I was very familiar with the putties and I was familiar with the juice bar and the command center and to walk onto these sets for the first time and, you know, look around and see all that. And for her to be able to experience that, it made, it was, it, it helped me relive all of that as well, you know? So and uh, beautiful was, symmetry too. Just, I mean, between, you know, getting to come back to, you know, spend time in the juice bar, you get time you know, with the new command center you know, talk about it, stepping on those sets. What was it like for these rebuilt, redesigned aspects of your of your personal life? Yeah, I mean, it was just crazy to step into it and be like, wow, it really looks like the old juice bar, you know? Like, uh, uh, I remember, though, like, you know, the, the ways that we had to enter into the set were different than the old sets. We, we came in from a different way, and I just always thought that was kind of funny that they have to, like, the back corner, you know, but by, by behind the bar, and like that's where we used to enter X and exit off set, and then that whole area is just walled off. And I'm like, oh, well, we used to come in from that way, <laughs> you know, just just odd little funny things like that, you know. Um, but I just thought it was, uh, I thought it was very cool to uh, just to see it come back to life again. So, from a production standpoint as well, I'd be curious. You know, I know that you guys had a lot of fun on the original set. Um, any fun antics or stories you could share about your uh, your current group? Uh, what do you mean? Like just like just, funny thing? Yeah, just any sort of you know fun adventures. I know that uh, some of the team uh, went off to explore New Zealand. Uh, I know they went to Hobbiton. yeah. We did do a little bit of that. We took a we took a ferry out to one of the islands out there, and uh, Catherine and I uh, rented a couple of mopeds and and sort of went visit going from winery to winery to winery to winery and just having little samples at each one. <laughs> that was a pretty fun adventure. Um, and just little things like that, you know. And then, you know, like the when I went to New Zealand before, you know, I went with, with, with JDF and all the other cast mates from the 2017 one and uh, and uh, did the, uh, the jumping off of the tower uh, from the wires they have up there. So just that kind of fun stuff. I mean, we, you know, I got to try to experience as much as I can with uh, with the team, you know, get as much in as possible. You know, we went out on some really beautiful hikes and some beautiful trails that take you to the top of these cliffs and you just look out over the ocean and the sights are just incredible. And it's really interesting how a lot of those visuals translated into the special as far as the locations that were shot and just different pieces they pulled in to help, I feel like, flush out Angel Grove in a new way that we hadn't seen before in a more, like, say, cinematic perspective. It, it visually is stunning what they pulled off just in the opening sequence alone. Yeah, well, I mean, just, I mean, so many things, too. I mean, not just the, you know, the background setting of it, but just the way that it was shot, too, you know, like, and, and the, the, the stunt work by the, by the stunt guys and, and all the fight scenes and, uh, and everything, um, you know, they just, they really took it up to another level and, you know, but it's still very true to like what Power Rangers was like before, you know, and, um, you know, the special effects they did with the auto morphing and all that kind of stuff like that was really cool um, as well. So that was also a new aspect that I thought was really neat. You know, how they would just like these mid morph, you know, like start from a flip and it would be like a regular person flipping and then it would land, you know, in the suit, <laughs> you know, and uh, they have special effects that go over that. So I thought those mid morph things were really cool. We had to talk about Rocky's badass moment on the moon. It was a pretty awesome final sequence. How'd you feel? Um, well, I mean, you know, I thought, uh, you know, like I said, uh, I just... I thought all of it was was shot really well, you know, and, um, you know, the stunt guys took 
a lot of care to make sure to do everything they could to make us look as good as possible, you know, because some of us don't move the same way that we used to, <laughs> but they made us look good. <laughs> and I am always grateful for that. <laughs> Rocky as a firefighter, was that something that uh, you had input on or where did that come from? <laughs> no, that was, that was strictly them. They, they had, they had come up with that. And I just thought, well, you know, that's fitting, you know, Rocky, Rocky, you know, is always going to be a hero, no matter how much he tries to downplay himself, you know? From a legacy perspective, are there any stories that you would like to share from your experience with conventions or, or any fans you've got to interact with that have resonated with you throughout all these years? Oh, man, there's so there's so many, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I this is a, a story I get to hear all the time, but it just never, you know, it's it's the one thing that just keeps motivating me to continue to keep trying to reach out to the fans and things is, you know, when a fan will come up to me and say something along the lines of like, hey, you know, I, I had like a really rough childhood growing up. Um, but, you know, to be able to watch your guys' show every day was always just like a nice little escape for me. And, you know, it was one of the things that motivated me to do this or become this or, you know, inspired me to want to try to be better in this part of my life or whatever. Um, you know, all those kind of stories when people come up and tell me those kinds of things, you know, it just you know, it just really resonates with me because it just, you know, we never knew what kind of impact we were really having. I mean, we knew it was a craze, you know, back then and the, the kids loved it, but never did I dream that 30 years later that the fans would still have such a love for it so much so that they're willing to stand in line just to wait and meet us you know what I mean and to be able to shake hands with us and tell us their story and take a picture and you know get a signature or whatever you know they may want for their experience you know um I mean who could have ever thought that that would have been like this that that many years later and now to forever be part of pop culture like this um I mean just what a blessing you know like, I just, I, I there's no other way to put it, you know? You guys did such a phenomenal job. I'm sorry, I have to say a more phenomenal job for <laughs> the episode. I, I watched it late last night and I was hyped up, you know, for, for hours. And I think that it's going to really resonate with the fans, just the, the level of thought and care that went into this from start to finish. So uh, well, I think you guys have a lot to be proud about. Thank you. I appreciate that, you know, and I just, I hope so too, you know, I just hope that, you know, um, we were able to properly give back to the fans for all that they've given us, you know, and all the support that they've given us. You know, we really, you know, it, it really was, you know, not only like a tribute to to Twee and of course now to to Jason, but, you know, just it really was, you know, in my opinion, like a love letter back to the fans, you know, just to try to say, you know, that, uh, you know, we've heard, we've heard you, we want to try to give back you know, and give you the, give you the Rangers that you want to see at now that you're older, you know, and something that also the newer fans could be super excited about too. It's going to eat away at me that I'm not gonna be able to talk about this episode for a couple more days. So uh, very, <laughs> Hang very in there, buddy. Hang in there.